You can have all the competence and self-control in the world, but if you don't have the impression that you're actually having a positive influence on other people's lives, if you don't feel likeable, then you can't be confident. That's why it's important that you make sure that you have a positive influence on other people's lives. For example, by contributing in a positive way to their lives. A Stanford study showed that those people who contribute a lot actually have increases in their confidence and also in their happiness. Another way to have a positive impact on someone else's life is by being a role model. And obviously, if you want to be a role model, you also have to be very competent and self-controlled. So self-control can also help you to have a be better impact on other people's lives. However, when you try developing yourself into a version that you think you could be more proud of, you have to make sure that you don't go to the extreme of simply developing yourself in order to impress other people or in order to gain approval because doing so won't make you feel strong or confident at all to the contrary it will actually have you feeling like a weak helpless victim to the opinions of others in fact desperately trying to gain attention is a sign of two things self-esteem coupled with the idealization of another person or something else and often of course when you feel when you don't feel confident it is very very easy to feel inferior to other people or inferior to some kind of qualification and frankly by doing so by seeking validation the whole time you're basically giving other people the power over your own happiness and your own self-image. Not seeking validation can be very, very difficult for most of us and is definitely more easily said than done. So how exactly can we make sure that we don't people please as much and don't seek as much validation? So what you need to always keep in mind if you want to stop people pleasing and stop seeking validation is that there are many, many options, many more options out there that are similar, if not even better than what you have now. The key in being confident lies in getting a job or getting a partner as if you simply didn't need one. Dan Sullivan often talks about how you want to make sure that you are the buyer, not the seller. So what exactly he means by that is that the buyer always has the ability to walk away from an offer. So the buyer is the one who chooses whether he wants the product or not, whereas the seller hasn't really got a choice. He's desperately trying to convince the other one of himself or his own product. So be the buyer, not the seller. Be the one who chooses. Don't be the one who's chosen. Be proactive and not reactive. The next tip is very, very similar to self-talk which would be that you should change your narrative. Often we don't only talk to ourselves in a very harsh way by saying a couple negative things about us here and there. We often construct entire stories about why we're not good enough, why we're not worthy of love, why bad things always happen to us or why we will never get what we truly want. And as Laurie Gottlieb points out, you can have two people in the same relationship telling, talking about their relationship from two completely different angles and completely different perspectives, both of those stories being valid but different. So if we construct meaning and stories about everything in our lives and we will never really truly be sure whether they're actually true or not, then we might as well choose to consciously construct constructive stories that will actually make us happy. So rewrite your past. Rewrite all those stories about why you're not good enough, or why you're not worthy of love, or why you're not deserving. Another way of feeling more confident, and this one works instantly, is simply by changing your body language. 
In a study, participants were split into two groups. So one was told that they had to slouch, whereas the other one was told that they had to sit straight. Um, and then both of these groups were to write down why exactly they thought they were qualified for a certain job. And it turned out that those who were sitting up straight actually believed more that what they actually were writing down about themselves which would make them qualified for the job actually was true. In a study led by Amy Cuddy, participants were also um, split in two groups. So again, for two minutes each, one group was told to be in higher, uh, high power poses, whereas the other ones were told to take on low, lower power poses. And then later on, it turned out that those who had high power positions had a 20% increase in testosterone and a 15% decrease in cortisol, whereas the ones who had to um, be in these lower power positions, their testosterone levels decreased by 10% and their cortisol levels increased by 15%. So all in all, if you want to be confident, you need to make sure that you're actually competent and that you have self-control, but also you have to make sure that you have a positive influence on the lives of others and that you actually feel liked.